I'm Welsh, despite the accent. I'm proper Welsh. Um, I was educated bilingually until I was 14. Um, my parents come from a fairly poor background. My, my mother comes from a mining family. My father grew up in a council house. Um, he comes from Mid Wales. Um, they were the first in their family to go to university and they met at university. I'm the daughter of an English teacher. So journalism sort of had, a, had an attraction to me um, and for me, but I ended up doing two weeks work experience at a solicitor's firm um, in year, what used to be year four of school, so I must have been 14. And I was lucky enough, I was living in Ipswich at the time, and the lawyer that I was allocated to for this two weeks um, had a hearing at the High Court in London. And when I walked in and walked into the courtroom, I knew that that's what I wanted to do. So having enjoyed my two weeks work experience so much, um, they, the, this, this firm were great. They took me back as an office junior every summer then, um, which I thoroughly enjoyed, uh, doing all the boring mundane jobs and just learning about office skills. Um, and when my A-level results came through, um, they perhaps weren't quite as I wanted them to be. And this same partner um, took me out for a coffee and, and explained to me that there is an, another route into law. Um, and so the Silex route allows you to study whilst you're working. Um, so it's, it's the equivalent of a sort of degree by distance learning. Um, you spend two years doing A-level um, qualifications in law, and then another two years doing degree level qualifications in law whilst working the whole time. Silex stands for Chartered Institute of Legal Executives. Um, they're often called legal execs um, or legal executives, um, although more recently they tend to be called Silex lawyers. Um, and so the Silex route into law just opens up options for people who either can't or weren't able to go down the traditional law degree and then training solicitor contract. Um, it allows you to study law whilst working and so it opens up, um, open ups the access to the law really. A lot of the women that I sat alongside were secretaries who had not had the opportunity to go to um, university as a younger woman for whatever reason, generational. I, th I think they, a lot of women in their 40s, I found, had been a, a very good secretary for 20 years and realised that actually they were bright enough to be a qualified lawyer in their own right. And so Silex gave them the opportunity to qualify without having to stop earning and, and leave children to, to go and get a, a university degree. The firm I was with um, acted for insurance companies, so I was acting for the defendant. Um, a lot of people, when you say personal injury, they assume you're acting for the, the, the victim of the accident. But actually, I really enjoyed acting um, for the defendant side of things because it's, um, it's, more, you, it, it's more technical, I think. I enjoyed the technicality of the law. You tend to only get the case once proceedings have been issued. Um, and so you're often running quite quickly as a defendant lawyer, um, getting into the nitty-gritty of the litigation and the procedure of the court, because it was the court setting that I really enjoyed. When I left um, East Anglia, I, I moved to Birmingham, and I ended up working for Beechcrofts. I think they're DAC Beechcrofts now, but they, they were Beechcrofts back then. Um, and I joined them in the late 90s. I worked for two fabulous women lawyers who were fearsome in their ability to juggle an amazing career and children and family and, and so they were great role models for me. Um, when I was pregnant with my second child, my husband and I decided that we really wanted to relocate, we didn't want to raise our children in Birmingham, so we relocated to the southwest. and these two women had uh, set up a home working pilot at Beechcrofts, which was quite revolutionary at this time. Technology was just about making it possible to work paperlessly and remotely and because they knew me and they, I had a proven track record with them, they were happy to allow me to join this pilot programme and see how it worked. Um, and so I worked from home in Devon, um, linked into the Birmingham office so people would dial the Birmingham number and get through to my back bedroom in Devon. Um, and um, it allowed me to be at home and, and to work very flexibly. So um, I was able to be there when the children came home from school, it sometimes meant that I would have to work at 10 o'clock at night, but those are the 
uh, the, those are the trade-offs you make, really, as a woman. If you, if you want to keep working and you want to care for your children, you know, you do have to juggle and make sacrifices. My husband has been great. Uh, he, he's a lawyer as well. We met at work. Um, and so he understands the challenges of working in law, particularly in litigation. Um, deadlines come up and they have to be met. And so we, because we both worked full time, we shared the responsibilities equally. The only problem is I, that I found as we became older, his career proceeded and progressed more quickly than mine. And so we had to decide as a couple which we would invest the time in. Um, and so we had to make a conscious decision that he would probably um, rise more quickly than I would. And so he gave his career a priority and I took the children as the priority. Um, but I was quite comfortable with that at the time because I'd, I'd had children to be with children. And whilst I still work full time, I wanted them to be a priority. So I felt quite comfortable with that decision. But it was interesting that we had to make that conscious decision. But as the children got older and they needed me less or needed me in a different way, um, it gave me a chance to reflect on what I wanted to do for the next 20 years. I'll probably be working till I'm 75, so I've still got a long career left. I'm only halfway through it, really. And so there are a few routes that you can take. You can go for partnership, you can join the money-making machine, or you can have a look at alternative routes. And I did look at teaching. Uh, teaching law, um, but in fact I, I applied for a judicial appointment um, and I think to my surprise as much as anyone else's, I was successful on the first attempt, which I understand is quite unusual, and I've been appointed as a first tier tribunal judge. I'm really pleased that I've been able to break that, that glass ceiling, but also I'm quite disappointed that it's taken this long. I think the Judicial Appointments Commission are also keen for the judiciary generally to become more diverse, and Silex lawyers tend to be more diverse, and so if you appoint Silex lawyers to the judiciary, it inevitably will help to make the judiciary more diverse. Have I caught up with my husband? Um, it's hard to say because I've taken a different direction. He's been very successful in his career, um, we, we support each other a great deal um, and so I was very supportive for him and his career and he's ended up becoming managing partner in his firm so he's very fulfilled and happy career-wise which helps the whole family because uh, you know it's a team effort as we we often say. I'm sitting one day a week um, and I'm preparing for that day there's a lot of preparation and reading to be done for every day's hearing so I'm doing that at the weekend so I am finding that it's, it's quite demanding, um, but at the same time it's intellectually very challenging and that's what I wanted. Um, now I wanted a new challenge and I've certainly got that. Um, and my employers, my, my current firm, Ashford's, are being um, incredibly supportive and they're letting me be very flexible. I've reduced my hours down to four days a week, but they're letting me be very flexible so that I can really get a feel for what works for me um, and um, allows me to do both roles well.